Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yeah. A 60 year old male came to ER with complaints of loss of consciousness for about 3 minutes while passing urine. On initial 10 second assessment, conscious patient was conscious oriented, airway appears patent, C spine non tender, breathing respiratory rate was 13 per minute, saturation 96% room air, air entry bilateral equal. Coming to circulation, BP was 130 bar 80 millimeters of mercury, pulse rate 86 per minute, all peripheral pulsations equally felt in all four limbs. Disability GCS was E4, V5, M6, pupils 2.5 mm equivalent reacting bilaterally. Exposure ephebrile GRBS was 130 mg per deciliter. Okay. At this point of time, we took a VBG mm. uh, which showing pH of 7.4, mm. PCO2 31, mm. potassium 3.5, sodium mm. 134, mm. lactate 1.8, mm. glucose 128 and bicarbonate mm. of 25 mm. and ECG showing a normal sinus rhythm with a rate of 86 per minute. Okay. Coming to history. Mm. A 60 year old male presented to ER with history of giddiness and transient loss of consciousness for lasting for about 3 minutes mm. while passing urine. Following regaining of consciousness, patient was having no complaints of confusion but profuse sweating was present. He was, com uh, had, he was having complaints of fever since 1 to 2 days. Mm. No history of slurring or speech, one sided weakness, jerky movements, involuntary micturition or passage of stools. Mm. No history of palpitations, chest pain and shortness of breath. Okay. On examination, conscious patient was conscious oriented, no pickle, palorectal sinuses, clubbing lymphadenopathy, CNS examination, no facial deviation, no ptosis, no drooling of saliva, no pronated drift, uh, power 5 by 5 in all four limbs, cerebellar signs were negative, all other systems were yes, within normal limit. Okay. So, uh, what's your diagnosis for this patient? Uh, Closional diagnosis you can have? A syncope episode, okay. most probably a reflex syncope. Okay. Okay. Syncope, uh, whether uh, what are the reasons that you will anticipate when a patient is coming to the ER? You have to differentiate between the most common differential is a seizure. seizure. So, uh, and most importantly, majority of the time, what is the exact definition of syncope? A transient loss of consciousness. That is very important. Transient loss of consciousness. So many times when patients come to the ED, they you think it is syncope, it is not syncope, it is pre-syncope. They had just giddiness, they had a little bit of blackout, but they had never lost consciousness. So, when you lose consciousness only, we can call it as a syncope. And the nearest differential diagnosis being is a seizure. So, you have in the history itself, we have differentiated between uh, seizure. So, what will be the classical features to differentiate between a seizure and a syncope? Uh, syncope there will be preceding some symptoms will be there or a very trigger will be there for syncope. Okay. Uh, then uh, also the uh, pre-syncope like features will be present for syncope. Sometimes it will be there, sometimes it will not be there. In this, um, in this patient, there was no any other symptoms. He just suddenly collapsed. collapsed. Then? Uh, then there will be jerky movements mm. uh, and frothing from mouth. See some jerky movements both for syncope and uh, seizure also you can see. But the classical tonic clonic sort of a convulsion features you won't see in syncope. So that is classical of your seizure. Then involuntary micturition. Again involuntary micturition mostly you see in seizure but rarely you can see in syncope also. Postictal confusion. Postictal confusion and the duration is very key. So the most important the duration of syncope is hardly seconds to one minute maximum. But seizure might be lasting the sensorium that patient will be improving only after a brief period of 5 to 10 minutes and as you said rightly there will be significant post rectal confusion. So that is one classical thing. Again tongue bite we used to say it is classical of seizure. Again syncope they also can have some amount of tongue bite. Even uprolling of eyes it can seen in uh, both the seizure as well as syncope. The classical discriminating feature will be the how the recovery has happened. What is the total time duration have taken for the patient to recovery from the symptom. So, uh, it's actually when you are looking syncope, you can never put it as a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. We need to find out what is the reason why the patient has de developed. It's a sign that you are eliciting from the patient. You have got, okay, there is a syncope. What are the common causes? How will you classify syncope? From that you need to put, okay, it is a cardiac syncope. It is a situational syncope. It is a non-situational system. It is a simple uh, uh, vagal syncope. So, you have to differentiate between these different types then you have to plan the treatment accordingly. So, when this patient is coming to you, 60 year old, so that is the first thing, age factor, he is an elderly male has come to you, 60 years. So, what could be the common reasons for him to have an syncope? 
common reasons. Basically. I'm not saying for this patient, common causes for a 60 year old. What are the things that you put high up in the list? Arrhythmias. Arrhythmias, okay. Uh, Bradian tachyarrhythmias. Okay. Among this, bradyarrhythmia is the most common one. And he can have a complete heart block also, very rarely then. Uh, vasovagal. Vasovagal syncope, okay. See, uh, what are the problems in 60 year old? So, what I wanted in history, what preceded the symptom? You said he was going to the washroom and he developed. What are the other symptoms that you usually can anticipate? What are the usual triggers that you can anticipate? Uh, sudden change in position from supine to standing. Okay. Um, and another history that I am going to give you is that he was bending down and he has suddenly bending down and he is lifting its head up. So that is vertebral basilar insufficiency. Again, at 60 years, he can have a lot of osteophytes. This osteophytes can cause the compression of your blood vessel and transiently he can have a blackout sort of a feeling and he might feel a syncope also. So that is the other thing. Then other one. What will be your uh, hypersensitivity carotid? Not for this age group. What will be the classical symptoms of an hypersensitivity carotid? Syncopal attacks while uh, sudden change in neck movements. Okay. Tight collar. Tight collar. Tight collar shirt. Then? Shaving. shaving. At the time of shaving. That's a male patient that you need to ask him for. And uh, most commonly, those group of patients when they are going for dental procedures. Dental procedures, they will be positioned in this way. And it will be covered. And there will be a lot of compression coming over the carotid area. So that is the history that you need to elicit it. So uh, we have to see why he has developed the syncope. It can be a simple carotid hypersensitivity. As you said, it can be a simple vasovagal syncope also. Due to pain. The most common reason... To, due to pain, seeing a blood suddenly, mm -hmm. so hearing a uh, bad news or something, they can have all this vasovagal syncope. So, what is the basically the pathophysiology behind syncope? What is happening during syncope? A transient uh, bradycardia and hypotension causing a reduced cerebral perfusion. Whatever be the cause of syncope, there is a transient cerebral hyperperfusion. Perfusion. Transient cerebral hyperperfusion that is leading to loss of consciousness and once that event is finished, the patient is regained consciousness. So, hardly it is taking very low time. So, it is a cerebral hyperperfusion that is happening. So, that is the majority of the time when you see somebody is collapsing in the road, we are asking them to lift the legs up so that the suddenly we can increase the venous return and increase the blood pressure. Now, how will you uh, put this patient in What What is your uh, uh, finding of uh, this patient? Uh, this patient actually the history was uh, while passing urine he was having a syncope uh, it may be due to a sudden re reduction in uh, intra-abdominal pressure causing decreased uh, cardiac input so uh, you know, so that is the most common reason when you have mixturation syncope and what are the other type of situational syncopes that you can have uh, cough syncope cough right? syncope what happens in cough you are coughing 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 or is happening intrathoracic pressure, pressure and as a result venous return is decreasing okay, and suddenly you can have so cough syncope mixturation syncope these are all situational syncopes or as you said reflex syncope you can name it what are the other type of syncopes which you think you need to evaluate immediately Cardiac syncope. Cardiac. So, cardiac syncope definitely you are getting an ECG, you are getting a bradyarrhythmia. What are the other findings that you can anticipate in the ECG? What are the ECG you need to look in for when a patient is coming with syncope? What are the things? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. Uh, any uh, arrhythmia, so you can be bradycardia or tachycardia, can okay. be heart blocks, any new onset LBBBs, okay. uh, signs of any MI. Okay. Um, then. Uh, Brugada pattern. Then, what are the other named syndromes? Um, Tachybrady syndrome, then? Talk. That's all MI. I am not saying regarding what are the causes they can come with syncope history. It runs in the family. It can. Talk, six Six syndrome, we have already discussed. Then? Talk, Adam. L, start with? QTC, again, that is another thing, prolonged QTC syndrome, LGL syndrome, these are all uh, you have to think in terms of. So, these are uh, all uh, family runs in the family. Then you have to ask for any family history of sudden cardiac death, all those things that you need to ask in for. So, uh, somebody is coming after a sports activity and uh, he had a syncope at the sports activity. So, what could be the reasons for that? Uh, he's in, he's telling that he's in, uh, he went to for a sports he went for playing football and he is coming to you 
and uh, he had a syncope. So what could be the reason for syncope for that patient? Aortic stenosis. Okay. Hmm. Young males, no? Uh, then? HOCM. HOCM, cardiomyopathy. So that is another thing, HOCM. We need to ask him for HOCM history. So what type of murmurs you have to, systolic murmur, anything is there, you need to check in for, get an echo and all those things. Then, somebody had an hit over the chest and he has collapsed. I mean, I mean uh, tension pneumothorax? No, no, hit over the chest and he collapsed. And he went into an arrhythmia. So that is called as commercial corbis. So that is actually you see, you know, when you have football players, mm -hmm. when the football players suddenly they are playing here and suddenly they had a hit over the chest, they are collapsing there. Then they are done CPR, they are reviving him and uh, getting. So suddenly because of this impact, an arrhythmia can develop. So ventricular attack arrhythmias can develop and the patient can collapse. So these are all things that you need to evaluate. Cardiac syncope, definitely you need to evaluate thoroughly. And you think there is a vertebral basilar insufficiency that is causing this thing. Definitely those also need evaluation. And what is the most other cause? Like when you have got heat exhaustion, when that's usually they will come with pre-syncope, dizziness and all those things, they will come with pre-syncope. And many patients, many young, actually young patients are coming up, they are feeling that when they suddenly get up on the chair, when they are standing, they are feeling this giddiness. What is the problem with that? Orthostatic. What is the problem? Why he should develop an orthostatic hypotension? Mm. What is your venous return is depending upon what? Muscle. Muscle it is activity of your calf muscle. If your calf muscle is weak, your venous return will be less. So only thing what you need to do is ask them to do some strengthening exercises yes. for calf muscle. So you are seeing a lot of students that is coming with giddiness and all. Because majority when they are standing up for some time they are feeling this giddiness. Because of less number of activity their calf muscle is not strengthened enough. So that's a simple thing what you can do for that. How can you diagnose this? How can you diagnose this? A simple thing. Postal hypotension will be there, then other than that, you can do leg raising. Other than that, what we can easily do, no? take an ECG, uh, connect to the monitor and see what is the heart rate. And what should happen when they are standing? Should increase, increase. So that's a simple test that you can do. Nothing else is needed. Just ask them to stand up, connect the ECG leads and record the what is the heart rate. Ask them to stand up and see what is happening to the heart rate. So that is a simple thing that can understand that when it is increasing. When activity increase, they can all improve. So, syncope is a very, it's a common thing, but you need to evaluate the syncope properly. So, what are the classification? Can you just briefly say whatever you have discussed? Uh, the classification can be, uh, it can be cardiac syncopes, then uh, non-cardiac syncopes. Cardiac syncopes can be this cardiac arrhythmias, uh, six sinus syndrome, aortic stenosis and HOCM. Uh, Stokes Adam syndrome, atrial myxomas or ball valve uh, thrombus, subclavian steel syndrome, and MI. Uh, neurogenic, I mean, non cardiac means vasovagal, orthostatic, carotid sinus hypersensitivity, post maturation, post tussive uh, syncope, uh, vertebro basilar arterial uh, diseases. Okay. So, uh, what will be your approach? You want every patient coming to the ER to be evaluated no. with uh, syncope? No, uh, we have to first initially uh, differentiate between the seizure and syncope, the most common DD. If it is seizure or uh, if there is uh, it's syncope, then uh, if it is not syncope, then we can, you have to evaluate for seizures, other things. And if it is uh, syncope, you have to first uh, take the history, uh, then evaluation um, involving ECG. If there are ECG changes, we have def definitely to evaluate. Majority of the time, you won't get any ECG changes. That's uh, a usual thing. Then. Uh, so again, as I always say, risk factors. We look for the other risk factor. If it is the first episode, if the patient has got multiple episodes similar to this, then definitely they need evaluated. How is the heart structurally? How is the rhythm? Then Holter wanting all those things you can suggest. If you're not finding anything, it's the first episode, you can easily send them home. But it's a recurrent episode, you definitely need to evaluate. Any drugs can cause? Beta blockers. Beta blockers. Time slows and again alpha first dose effect. The patient can have this first dose effect and beta blockers because it decreases the heart rate. Maybe the patient uh, is have taken extra dose. Maybe that much dose is not needed. So that's a common thing. They can present with uh, syncope and always always remember MI. One of the most common. So syncope patient mandatorily to get an ECG. So don't send back a patient without an ECG. So that's a ideally an ECG and a structural evaluation of the heart is required ideally. 
minimum bare minimum uh, if willing you can just put them on an observation for a day if it's a multiple episode definitely you need to uh, admit to them and uh, maybe it can be a preceding symptom of a stroke also if it is due to uh, neurogenic pre cardiac maybe uh, vertebral basilar insufficiency and so you need to admit them okay anything else that you want to add fine thank you